I am 100% convinced <laughs> that the best way and most important thing that you can do to increase your sales on Poshmark and build your Poshmark reselling business, the two things that are most important in my opinion are sharing your items as many times as possible up to the limit and including as many relevant keywords as humanly possible in your listings and today i'm going to talk about these things especially those keywords i've got eight for you so be sure to watch what's up resellers i'm rebecca and you're watching rebecca the reseller thanks for joining me today for a great video all about one of my favorite topics keywords so there's lots of variables that come into play when you're listing, like your actual listings, your title, your description, your photos, what the item actually is itself, whether it's a good style or if it's old or whatever, what brand they are, how old they are. There's so many things that come into play, but I do believe the two easiest ways to make more sales, have a huge impact on increasing your sales is sharing and keywords, okay? And I think that many people are doing the basics when it comes to both of them. And if you can level up on each, you're gonna see a dramatic impact. And if you could just level up on one, then that's fine. But I think if you can level up on both, that's the way to go. So today I'm gonna to share with you eight keywords that I believe help many items sell in my closet. So what I did was I went back through my solds and I tried to just scan the keywords. This wasn't like scientific where I tallied everything. <laughs> I went through and I just kind of scanned to get a feel for the things that kept coming up. And if they came up more and more, then they definitely made it onto the list. So I want you to get yourself educated about keywords, especially if you're new. This was probably the biggest problem for me is just educating myself on keywords. And really it's just research. It's looking up a word that you don't know or looking up an item similar to yours and finding the keywords that make sense. But once you start getting them in your head, then you won't have to look them up anymore and it goes really quickly. So two other resources that I have for you, I did a video a while ago and it's probably like the most popular one on my channel. I'll link it here. It's my keywords video that I did quite some time ago. That's got some great keywords and some great information in it. And then I do have a keywords list available for download. You can get the link to that down below. Check my reseller resource guide. It could take you to my academy or it can take you to my Etsy shop where all of my downloads are. So let's get into this list. So the first one is high rise, high waisted, high waist. I think that you could and possibly should put them all if you currently don't. So if you have something that's high rise, it's also high waisted or high waist and people search for different things. So I think you should have those all in there especially high rise and high waist. I don't know if you put high waisted, maybe you would get pulled up by high waist. I'm not sure how that works, but I do think having both of those in there, I see rise ignored a lot. You have the measurements, but you don't classify it in keywords. And so someone's not gonna necessarily look for a 10 and a half inch rise in whatever, like they're not gonna do that. They're gonna look for a high rise if that's what they're looking for or mid rise or low rise. So all the rises, but I think you should think of all of the different ways that you can say it and you should include all of them so that you capture all of those searches because that's what keywords do. Keywords pull you in to a search. So your listings out there and you want to get pulled into that person's search. So if they search high rise, you get pulled in if you have that keyword. If you don't have that keyword, you're not pulled into her search. Next one is boho and bohemian. These I've talked about in the past. I think just the idea of having boho and bohemian is good. I'm not sure if this trend is on its way out or not. It was all the rage for the last few years, but I still include it because there are many things that I source where it does apply and obviously don't put it if it doesn't apply but just remember that you can say boho and you can say bohemian and someone might be searching for one or the other. Minimalist is the next one and this would kind of be, you know, the opposite of boho and bohemian. There's also the people that just like me, like things that are super plain and minimal. And so that's a great keyword to add in if you have something where it would apply because it's not a neckline style. It's not a sleeve style. It's an essence. It's an overarching style. It's a classification for this item, you know, a look and feel that somebody's going for. And so 
sometimes those keywords get overlooked by resellers because you're just looking at the shirt and you're saying it has this kind of neckline and this kind of sleeve and this kind of this and this kind of that. You're looking for all those really technical terms, which are great and should be in there. But then sometimes you forget those kind of like stylized ones. So bohemian, boho, minimalist, those are ones like that. The next one, number four, is cropped or crop. Sometimes possibly ankle if that, you know, if it's pants or jeans and it's cropped, you could also put it as an ankle. If it's a crop top, obviously it's not ankle. But those kinds of keywords are important because you need to get a feel when you're measuring an item. If those proportions on a top seam where it's short, then you want to call that a crop top or cropped. It could be a cropped sweatshirt. So you need to look at those proportions when you're measuring and say, does this look too wide for the length? If that's the case, it's cropped or it's crop. And so you want to put those in there. Again, pants, I put crop or cropped or ankle. Tops, it's just usually cropped or crop top. There's a lot of semantics there. Going along with that, often if something is cropped, not always, but often it's boxy. And that's a really good keyword too that I had learned a while ago and then started including. And I see it come up in a lot of the listings that I have that sold. Again, that's how I got all of these keywords is I went back through my solds to see what seems to come up again and again. I can't say that that particular keyword having boxy in there is the thing that made it sell, but I can tell you that if a lot of my listings come up and they have the boxy term in it, then that's something we should pay attention to. And you can do it for your own closet as well. Go through your solds and see what things keep coming up. Those are good keywords to continue to put and items to source. So boxy is the fifth one. Kind of also going along with that, sometimes things that are boxy can also be oversized. So when you're thinking like just those big oversized sweaters, oftentimes the reason why they're oversized is because they're boxy. And so that's the look. It's not a fitted look. It's not a, you know, cinched look. It's boxy. It's oversized. So that's the sixth oversized. And then also going along with that, because these often I put them all together in a listing. So that's why they keep coming up slouchy. You can have slouchy, you know, sleeves on a sweater. You can have slouchy pants, kind of like that boyfriend look. There's lots of things that can be slouchy. Bags can be slouchy. So slouchy is a good keyword. The eighth one is two. And then I have a couple of informational points. Dainty and delicate. Now this can be for clothing. I primarily have this one come up for a lot of the jewelry that I sell for my boutique because that was the kind of style that I was looking to source for because I saw that it you know, went well in my research. And so things that are dainty and delicate could also potentially fall in that minimalist category, but just really thin jewelry, really, you know, like a dainty little butterfly that's delicate on a ring or on earrings, things like that. So dainty and delicate, I put those two together as keyword number eight because I feel like that came up often in my search of my solds. And if you're not using those keywords when appropriate, you could be missing out on sales. So one thing I will say is you don't want to apply keywords to your listing just for exposure. I see that all the time, just for exposure. And then they have a list of every word known to man. Don't do that. That's It's off-putting to a buyer when I see those. I'm just like, Bleh, she doesn't even know what she's doing. I just don't think you should do it. I don't know if it confuses the algorithm and so you can't rank for things that you know, you do want to because it has all this other stuff. I don't know that level of SEO and how the Poshmark algorithm works. All I know is you want to put as many keywords as humanly possible that apply. I think adding relevant keywords that describe your item in as many ways as possible. So get those basics, but then also get the essence, get the style, get those overarching things. What occasion is it for? Those kinds of secondary keywords are important too. And then, you know, along with that, trying to figure out the same thing that you're trying to say, but would someone search for it any other way so that you can cover your bases like high rise, but someone might say high waist. Is it a silk dress, but then someone might call it silky or silky when it's really satin. So things like that, like how would someone else be looking for this item so that you can come up in their search? Because remember, the buyers are doing the searches, not the sellers. So I could list all of the seller appropriate keywords 
that I want to, but if I'm not meeting the buyer where they're trying to search for a satiny dress or a cocktail dress and I don't put cocktail in my listing, then that's not a match. So those are the kinds of things. Just try to like take it a step further if you can. And then again, check out the keywords video that I mentioned earlier for more keywords and more information. Check out my keywords list down below. Go ahead and sign up for my Poshmark strategies checklist so that you can get that for free. You get my emails every week, which have tons of tips and tricks and good information. And then I send out all of my links to everything so you have that. But I did wanna make you aware, I have a listing in my Etsy shop. It's called the Everything Bundle. And if you haven't seen this yet, you may wanna take a look, especially if you're thinking of getting the keywords list. So the everything bundle is what it is. Everything that's in my Etsy shop, every single digital download that I've made is in the everything bundle. So you could buy my entire shop for one low price. It's a huge discount off of what the regular price is. But the best part about the everything bundle is that I have lists, like lists, lists, lists miles long of new downloads that I want to make. And every time I make a new download, I'm going to add it to that everything bundle and you don't have to pay anything else. So you get everything I've ever created and everything I'm going to create. Digital downloads, not courses, but still every digital download that I'm going to make from here on out is going to go in there. And if you purchase it now, you're going to get it at the lowest price because every time I add a new download, the price goes up because the value goes up. So it's just something to think about if you're someone that has just found my channel or maybe you've been watching a long time and bought one of my items and I want to go and see what else is there. I have listing forms, keywords lists, DIY closet reviews. I have an ebook about running a local closet clear out service. I have closet signs, so many things. Plus I have all kinds of new stuff coming. So again, I'm just trying to make it like for the people that have bought multiple things for me, I totally appreciate it. And there's been many people that have come back from time to time and bought keywords list one day, and then they bought the sales phrases guide two months later. Then, And so I was like, if everybody could just get everything, that would save them a lot of money and give them access to all of it. So that's kind of what I was hoping to do with the everything bundle. Right now it's like $174 value and I think I have it up for like 80 something. So definitely go and check it out because then you get everything that I'm going to create as well. So hopefully these keywords that I gave to you today were helpful and just kind of like the idea that you need to pair the keywords with the sharing as much as possible is a really good way to kind of impact your sales right away. And then you always wanna be investing in yourself maybe in this uh, everything bundle to help you continue to move the needle forward in your reselling business and earn even more. I'm always here for you, so go ahead and leave me comments down below. Check out all of my links down below and I will see you in the next video. Be sure to like the video on the way out if you can. Bye.